Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, NHL slate, which is a very, very big slate. And I'm going to continue my, I guess, my new uh, process videos, uh, my new method of delivering content, where, uh, yes, I'm going to tell you who I'm kind of looking at tonight as far as who the good plays are. But more important, I imagine, is I'd like to continue to give you this repeatable process uh, where you, you can build lineups using the tools available to you to make your DFS play more enjoyable. Um, I appreciate you continue to come back to these videos to see who I like for a particular day, but in, in a weird uh, bit of irony, I'd almost rather you not have to come back to these videos. What, what I'd love to, again, have you guys do is learn a couple of times how to do this on your own, you know, and, and, and learn from what I've developed is to be a really good repeatable process. Um, and then if anything, use the true DFS um, tools to build your own lineups without having to come back to these YouTube videos. Um, when I used to do poker videos, that was kind of my key. Uh, yes, I would do my sweat videos where I would, you know, show people what I was playing, but more to the point, I would much prefer the videos where I would tell people how to play in the future. Um, so, Again, we're going to go through the same process that I use to build my hockey lineups, one which has been very, very successful this year. And it's, it's uh, I think it's really designed towards the, towards the kind of advanced casual player. In other words, someone who doesn't have 10 hours a day to, to commit to the drill down research and yet wants to put, have some intelligent process at their disposal to, to access lineups or to create lineups based on tools and data available to them without it's taking all that much time and, and to have a chance to win. You know, so this is what we're going to do with the exact same process. I'm going to just walk you through it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the daily team totals um, for each team uh, to give you an idea of which team rates to score the most goals, because goals usually correlate to fantasy points. Uh, and then what we're going to do is pull up my, the true DFS tools, uh, the sheets where we will look at the players and see if we can't eyeball it and just create lineups of guys that rate well that are from the same team on the same line and build a good lineup that way. Um, and then if we can't do that, or even if we can, then we're going to use SaberSim, which is my favorite optimizer, to upload our projections and have them build more lineups or, or maybe better lineups. And this is the exact process that I use to build my own lineups and it's repeatable, it's successful, and uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. So this is what I recommend. If someone tells me how to play NHL, ask me, this is exactly what I recommend and what I would do. And it's what I do, do. that's what I do. In any case, um, so let's take a look at a couple of models um, that show you what the, uh, what you call it, what the uh, implied goals uh, of these teams are for tonight's slate. So for, for Daily faceoff, they have the Hurricanes rated number one. And then behind that, they have Tampa and Colorado and kind of a drop to Boston. Um, then you have uh, uh, Daily Roto. and They have it similar. They have Boston at four, though, Winnipeg at four, Toronto at four, Nashville at four, Tampa at four. So they're not as much of a standout. And Carolina at four, Calgary at four. So they have they – have, more options available. Colorado, not even the, the, the top. They have it like 3.8. Ottawa at four. So if you look at Daily Roto, you probably get, you know, be turned on to a lot of other teams. And then on uh, SaberSim, let's take a look at that. You have Boston at 3.9. Tampa, kind of a standout at 4.2. And then you have Carolina at 3.8. Winnipeg, 3.6. Ottawa, Colorado. So basically the same types of teams. Okay, so these are the teams we're going to be looking for when we pull up the sheets to hopefully find, I don't know, like players that 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 rate pretty well and hopefully from the same team and on the same lines so we can play them all together. So let's pull up the uh, true DFS sheets, which, again, are available for premium subscribers. But today we're going to put it up here. Um, and the way I rank them is by what I have is called Sheets Value Score, which is a combination of projected fantasy points and points per dollar. 
Um, it's not exactly the same as points per dollar because I give a little bit of a bump for just, you know, the raw, you know, upside, the raw amount of points. And I don't want to get into the details of how the sheets value score is calculated. It's a pretty simple formula that I kind of like. Nonetheless, um, so we rate them this way. And the first thing we want to do is we want to just step back from this and kind of gaze at it and see if we can't find teams that have, you know, uh, a lot of guys right near the top bunched together. And that's kind of the easiest way to, you know, to play DFS using these tools is to just kind of have that kind of jump out at you. But when you do that on this particular slate, it's not exactly that easy, right? Because you have Colorado, uh, they have McKinnon up here at the top, but then you have to go down to Ranton, and he's fine, still top 20. And then you're going down to McCarr. So you do have three guys in the top 28, but but they are definitely pretty expensive. Uh, but, but it's certainly something to, to note. And the other thing I note, though, is I don't see too much else. You know, I, I just one Ottawa guy, nobody else on the, on the board. Actually, two Ottawa guys, but you, you want to have at least three in this top board, right? Boston, you have Pasternak and Bergeron and Marshan. Okay, so that's something. So you want to make it, take a shot at maybe Pasternak, Bergeron, and Marshan, and you look, they're all – on the same line, which helps, you know, actually the same power play. Pasternak's on the second EV line, first power play. We have um, Bergeron 1-1, one, one, which is really good, and Marchand 1-1, one, one, which is really good. So uh, Boston, very strong. So Colorado, Boston, those are probably my two favorites so far, but usually you'll find better. Usually you'll find like four from one team up here, um, but here we only have three. And it's just between Colorado and, and Boston. And what else? Tampa, you have two Tampas. And that's pretty much it. So that's not going to work. So, and you have kind of two Winnipegs. So what you're going to want to do is try to get Colorado in um, or Boston in. But the problem here, and, and we'll, I'll show you as we go through this, is going to be one of price. So let's just do it, though. I'll give you an example. You have Colorado. Uh, let's put the top guys in. It was McKinnon, Rantanen, and was it Lekkinen? Or was it McCarr? It was McCarr. Just make sure. It was, yeah, McKinnon, Rantanen, uh, or Rodriguez, but he's not on the same line. And McCarr. But let's put Rodriguez in anyway. Okay, maybe they maybe they mess around a little bit um, and they put them on the same line. Maybe he joins the power play. Is there another Colorado that close to here? Not really. Uh, yeah, Lekin is all the way down there. We could put Rodriguez in, but for now, let's just put the three guys in. Let's put our favorite goalie in. And our favorite goalie is basically just going to be the cheapest guy that rates well. So let's just take a look and see who that is. Um, there's Igor rather nicely. Top rated goalie. He's also the cheapest, I think, or one of the cheapest. So it's either him or Ettinger. So let's put in Igor as the goalie. And the problem here is that you have 35, 40 a man. Okay. And 35 40 a man is going to be very difficult to get any real good stack in here. So, what do you do from like a handbill perspective? This is kind of a, so this is a trick that I like doing. All right. So, you have a choice. You can either play, um, you know, uh, nobody, right? Or what you can do is find one or two guys that are cheap, then build a stack around them. So if you can find like a, a cheapo that rates really well, you can save salary. This is the way I do it by just building a, a stack around them, even though the other guys from that stack might not be the greatest. And if you look here, the first thing you notice is the Franier is near the top of the sheets value chart with a 30, which is pretty good for his freaking price. 
not to mention 1% ownership. I mean, let's go. And this is, this is exactly what you want to do here. So not to mention, we just put the goalie for the majors in. Now, again, the problem here is that you don't see too many good Rangers on the list, but you know what? It's just kind of too bad. Uh, you know, you have this value that's so strong. I think the combination of him with the other guys in the stack uh, is enough to generate, you know, this stack that's going to save you enough money to play someone like Colorado. So let's put some of these guys in. So we'll start with the uh, Lafreniere. Boom. And let's see what his – he's on – is he a 1-1? One, one? Let's take a look at him. Yeah, he's 1-1. One, one. So what other Rangers are there that are 1-1? One, one? We Well, we could sort by, by team for, the, for these purposes. Um, so there's Barzal. Um. Uh, we have Lafreniere and Zabinijad. Could we get him in at 7,200, though? Don't know about that. But you could play uh, Taco. He's on the first line. Let's start with, I guess, Barzal. Oh, Barzal's on the Islanders. Sorry. I was looking at the Islanders. Okay, sorry about that. Um, There was Fox, sorry, there was Fox. And then we have Lafreniere already. So Fox was a 1-1. One, one. And then we could play these other guys in the power play line. We could play Trocek, or we could play Panarin, or we could play Kako. So any of these guys work. So let's start with Adam Fox, because he's the easiest one, because he's 1-1. One, one. And then what are the ranges where they're really cheap? There's another ranger in there that was really cheap that I noticed. Um, rangers. Kako is 3,400. You play Kratzoff as well. Go at wing. Not easy. Okay. But I think that's what you have to do. I think you have to feed off of this Ranger stuff. Okay. And build your lineups this way. Um, uh, and then you can find two cheapos, you know, if you want to, to make that work. So that's what I would do. I, I would play the Lafreniere and just create some Ranger stacks around him so that I could play the Col Colorados. But, but I think that it would be even easier honestly, is to play Boston, because I think they might be a little bit cheaper. Let's go. Let's pull this up here. Um, so what, who do you, Pasternak, Bergeron, and Marshan, was that it? Yeah, so let's see if that's cheaper. Pasternak, well, Bergeron. Pasternak, ooh, he's 9,600. And Marshan, see if that works. So this is a little cheaper. You know, then you could fill these in a little bit easier. You're not 24, 15, man. So that's probably what I would do. I would play these Rangers, something like this. So that I could fit in these Boston's or maybe Colorado's, but just for fun, let's have um, let's have uh, Saberson build some lineups for us with these same projections and see what we come up with. So we're going to build 150 with the projections that we came up with uh, for my sheets. And let's see if we get. Let's see if they maybe they're better. Maybe they can jam in all these Colorado somehow in a way I don't know about. Maybe they could jam in. These Boston's, but I have a feeling 
that even Saberson with its complex algorithms is not going to be able to avoid this ranger thing. And yep, there it is. So Lafreniere, Fox, Igor, Trocek. So that's 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 what you're getting. And this makes absolutely perfect sense. And when you look at team stacks, Rangers are the top owned team stack. Can't quite get to as much Colorado, but you're getting some Winnipeg, Dallas, not as much Boston. Let's look at stack types for a second. It's kind of hard for it to get to these five twos or anything like that. So you might have to kind of tweak that a little bit. But overall, this Rangers business is what you really need to, I think, what you really need to accomplish. So again, that's for this slate. But that is the exact same process that you need to go through through every slate. First, look at the team totals and don't skip this, don't skip this step. You know, you got to look at what you're going to be looking at. Then pull up my sheets to see if you can gaze and figure it out hand built wise along the way. If you don't have four or five guys right at the same, you know, right in the right, right clunched together that you could build easily, then look for the cheapo and build around it. And then just as a sanity check, or if you want to just MME, then put the same projections into Sabersim and see what Sabersim spits out. And when it agrees with you, you're probably in good shape. Um, and that should pretty much do it. Uh, good luck uh, again for, for, for tonight's slate. And uh, hopefully you learn something for future slates. That'll do it. Good luck.